Hello, yes. Today we're going to discuss rational and non-rational methods of decision making. When you think about it, the work of a manager includes just making decisions for participating in their making, communicating them to others and monitoring how they are carried out. Essentially, a manager can make rational decisions, non-rational decisions, and irrational decisions. I'm sure you've all experienced that at one point or another, right? Whether it be even leaders at home, or it could be just leaders who um, are at any place of reference that you may work. It could be at McDonald's, a fast food restaurant. It could be uh, working in a nonprofit organization. It could be working for a private organization. It can also be working for an organization that is currently traded on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. So no matter who it is or where you work, there's going to be irrational and rational decisions. The term rational or logical is applied to decision making that is consistently analytic. And we see that analytics is a big proponent of what business is today to really understand the dynamic of a business, whether that be financially or through qualitative methods. The term non-rational to decision making is an intuitive and it's often judgmental. The term irrational to decision making and behavior is behavior that responds to the emotions or that deviates from the action that is usually rational. So sometimes when we get really excited about something, we often make irrational decisions based on our emotions. In rational decision making, Goals and alternatives are often explicit. The consequences of pursuing the different alternate alternatives are often calculated, very calculated. And these consequences are evaluated in terms to how close you can get to the predicted goals for the future. In non-rational, judgmental decision-making, the response to the need for a decision is truly, usually rapid, right? It just oftentimes goes um, partly off of those emotions, and it's often uh, too rapid to have a se se so sequential analysis to really know if this is really what you're supposed to be doing. The decision maker cannot usually give a, um, a good account of either the process or have a good reason for the decision that they made. And that's often attributed to just how rapidly they were trying to um, trying to distinguish which uh, which choice to actually make in their decision. Non the non logical process. So um, oftentimes things are non logical, and they're not magical in any sense of the word. They lie in physiological conditions or other factors or in the physical or social environment. And they're also irrational at times. Irrational often means poorly adapted to goals, right? So when we talk about irrational decisions, a decision make a decision that is rational for one industry or for one person or for one situation may be an irrational decision on another count. So if you're really going to um, possibly uh, buy a sneaker from the store and you only have a hundred dollars in your savings account but those sneakers cost a hundred dollars many people would say that it's irrational to take the hundred dollars from the savings to pay for the sneakers that potentially you don't need. Right? So however it will be a rational decision if you have 500000 in your bank account, or in your savings account, that is. So if you have $500,000 in your savings account and you spend $100 on, say, sneakers, maybe that sounds like more of a rational decision. So it's the same type of um, conclusion purchasing those sneakers. However, you're in two different modes of where you are in life. Summing it up, just rational decisions are 
carefully considered and negative outcomes are often weighed. Non-rational decisions are based on intuitive judgment and ira irrational decisions are often hasty. And um, the conclusion is not usually desired connected to the goal.